We all know what it's like to feel nostalgia. A sensation of longing for the past, when things were simple. A time when video games were fun, or we could just play World of Warcraft for eight hours a day after school. This video is gonna show you a piece of malware that kinda tickles that nostalgia piece a little bit. It's like those old key generators you used to download where you would try to crack Adobe CS2 and it would crack it, but it would also give your computer every disease known to man. You'd have to explain to your mom why all your family photos got deleted and replaced with pictures of dongs. In today's video, we're talking about Steel Fox malware, a new piece of malware that got caught that is like those old key generators, but it has a fancy new age twist. Let's dive right in. Before we start, if you're new here, hi, my name is Ed. This channel is Low Level, a place where I talk about cybersecurity, software security, and a bunch of other random garbage. So if you like that or just want to hang out, hit that sub button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. So this is a Steel Fox malware. It is a crypto miner and credit card information stealer that utilizes a really interesting technique called bring your own vulnerable driver. We'll talk about what that means here in a second, uh, but it's a technique that allows us to get system privileges on Windows machines by, as the name implies, bringing our own vulnerable driver. Now, what's really interesting and kind of funny is that the method that they use to get this malware onto computers is exactly like what I said before. Again, back in the day when you were definitely not of an age where you could be held legally responsible to do this, um, people who are not me would torrent software and they would need a way to crack the software to be able to use it definitely not legally. Uh, and so one of the things that people do is they download maybe a PDF editor that has a license or JetBrains or even AutoCAD, which is like a, a computer assisted design software for doing like mechanical simulations. Um, so to activate them, you go download these things called crackers. And the cracker, literally what it does is it finds a vulnerability or a misimplementation in the cryptography of the software and bypasses the DRM. So you can use the software without having the key. Um, and so obviously people who are doing a legal activities or, you know, who are downloading these, these software crackers, people who are writing the software crackers know that there's an inherent trust that people are just going to download around their software. So that became a place where a lot of malware showed up. People would just put malware into the cracking software. And then you are now infecting your CPU with the software. This has been happening since like the early 2000s, since the world of torrents and software cracking has been a thing. It used to just be that a the key for a piece of software would exist locally in the software itself. And you could either bypass the key checker by modifying a DLL, or you could just generate a valid key and it wouldn't check it globally, it would check it locally and you could bypass it that way. Now, recently there's kind of been a resurgence of bypasses like this for software like AutoCAD and these PDF editors. And so this ransomware group using the Steel Fox malware is masquerading their malware as a cracking piece of software that you can use to crack a piece of software like JetBrains, for example, right? So if you download JetBrains Family Bucket, you can go and download their JetBrains Activator.exe. Uh, Kaspersky is saying that these they're promoting these on, uh, on forums, teaching people how to activate JetBrains even though they haven't paid for it. And as a result, their malware goes ahead, it cracks the software, and then it also installs their malware. Now the malware is doing a variety of, of simple things we're all kind of used to. It's taking cookies, it's looking for all the installed software on the CPU, it's taking the build date, the network info, all the SIM card data. It's basically just scraping the entire system uh, and seeing what's going on in the system. But what's really interesting is it's using this technique that is really advanced called bring your own vulnerable kernel driver. And to kind of unwrap why this matters, we have to talk about the kind of the ecosystem of Windows real quick. Hey guys, real quick, before we continue, I wanna talk about my website, Low Level Academy. I honestly believe that if you wanna be a good programmer or a good cybersecurity analyst, you have to know the fundamentals of how computers work. All my computers are designed around this by teaching you the core languages of how the CPU works at a basic level, like C, assembly, or network code, or threading, all happening in C. You can go try out my courses right now for free. There are some lessons that are completely free. You don't have to log in or do anything to see them. Like right now you can do the load operation lesson in my ARM course, or maybe even learn about how arrays work in my C course. You can also log in right now for free and log in and do the decimal palindrome exercise. Can you figure out if a number is a decimal palindrome in C and it all runs in your browser? Can't be a good programmer if you don't know the fundamentals of computing and where do you learn that? on Low Level Academy. Thanks for watching, let's keep going. Bring your own vulnerable kernel driver is a really interesting technique. It's also extremely hard to say, and this is like the fifth take of me making this video because I cannot say that completely the first time. Anyway, bring your own vulnerable kernel driver is a really interesting technique uh, to get system privileges. Let's kind of break down in Windows how this works. The primary architecture of Windows is that you have users down here and you have 
the system level up here. And this is an oversimplification of it. But basically, when you land code execution on Windows, you are running your code in the context of a user. The user is like Steve or Phil or whatever. And there's also kind of a higher order user who's named administrator. Um, but that is still just a user, right? That, that, that is a context of a, a literal account that exists on the CPU. Now, what a hacker wants to do is they want to have this thing called NT authority, NT dash authority, I think, um, system. And when you, when you hear this basically in papers, it's referred to as system privileges. Uh, and the system privileges are basically saying, I am running code in the context of the kernel. I am, it's, a, it's like root, but it's a little higher privilege than root. It says that I am the operating system. And this is actually the authority that kernel mode drivers run in, right? So in the context of a CPU architecture, you have these things called rings. And there's ring three, which is, this is the user mode ring, the unprivileged ring where user code runs like your application. This browser, for example, is running in ring three and the kernel is running in this thing called ring zero. Ring zero is a mode of execution in an Intel CPU that gives the CPU access to not only a privileged memory map like kernel mode memory, but also privileged instructions. This is how the operating system needs to be designed to function. Now, obviously, if you're a hacker, if you land with code execution as Steve or even administrator, you want to figure out a way to get code execution to be authority system. And so what people typically do, they leverage these things called CVEs, which are just a way of exploiting a known vulnerability to take advantage of poor code in the kernel that gets you code execution as the kernel. Now, what if the target you're trying to hack into is modern, completely patched Windows 11, right? Like it's like, there are no CVEs that are public, all of them have been patched. Now there, there are two things you could do. You could try to get into the system as system by leveraging a bug that no one knows about. Um, but that's, expensive and really, really hard to do. So as a result, we have this idea of bring your own vulnerable kernel driver. The way that the Windows kernel is architected is you have the the, the core Windows application that's NTOS kernel.exe, which is literally like the program that runs at ring zero that is the kernel, right? When your computer boots up, a bunch of stuff happens and the kernel eventually turns on. And then it loads all these other module files or these .sys files that are drivers that allow your computer to do things, interact with hardware or to run privileged codes. One of them is like smb.sys, right? This is the SMB server in the Windows 10 kernel that has been the subject of plenty of vulnerabilities because it is a network facing protocol that is also in the kernel. So if you get a bug there, you are like, you are, you are golden. Now, the problem with all these drivers drivers is that to run them, they need to be signed by Microsoft. I can't just write uh, lowlevel.sys and install it and run it on Windows, right? This is done intentionally because they don't want people to be able to run malicious code and be able to run it anywhere in the kernel, right? That'd be very dangerous for the Windows ecosystem. So as a result, if I were to write lowlevel.sys, I would have to send it to Microsoft. They would have to sign it. And then now you can only run the driver because it is signed. Now, let's say, for example, lowlevel.sys had a vulnerability in it and it's signed. What does that mean? Well, what this hacker is able to do is bring lowlevel.sys with them when they exploit onto a system and then load that driver and then take advantage of the vulnerability to get NT authority system. They're basically taking advantage of the fact that this driver is not only signed, but also has a bug. And then knowing that bug, they're able to exploit it and get the authority of the kernel. And the way they actually do this is just like what I said, they bring this uh, this driver called winring0.sys, which I think is by EVGA. And so this driver has a known vulnerability that they're able to use the driver to arbitrarily read and write any memory location in the device. And they're able to take advantage of this vulnerability and use it to escalate their privileges up to system. And so through that, they, they are able to maintain their malware on the system. They connect back to their command and control server using SSL and TL, using uh, cert pinning and TLS 1.3, and they exfiltrate all this data back to their system. So really, really inter interesting stuff. You know, it's it's like a, a 2000s, you know, software cracker, only now it uh, exploits the kernel with a driver that has a bug. Pretty crazy stuff. And yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and go check out this video that I think you'll like just as much as this one. We'll see you there.